Really? Me? 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 Really? I, I hate to be this boomer, but like, you're, if you just bought the bread, the meat, and the lettuce, and the tomato, you know that you could make four sandwiches for the price of one, without a doubt. So like, it's not for money-based purposes. Unless you don't want to spend on Ziploc bags or something. And, th and then you could eat it fresh, yeah. You could even, like, toast the bread. You don't have to, like, leave it in the, f the work fridge or the grocery store fridge all day. It's just disgusting, man. I would rather eat anything than a grocery store egg salad sandwich. It might be the worst thing to eat that is designed to be food in North America. I mean, they're, they're not even trying. You gotta make them work a little bit harder than that. They're not even putting it on like a roll or like a sliced baguette or something like that. They're putting it on, on pre-sliced whole wheat bread. Come on. At least like, like act like you want my business. I would much rather eat a 7-Eleven Big Bite hot dog than a grocery store egg salad sandwich. For flavor, at least. For food safety? I don't know. If you get a grocery store sandwich that comes on a, a, a roll or like a, you know, it's a hoagie or something like that, that's fine. Or a croissant. It's just the ones that are like, they even made this special like triangular container. Just to hold shitty sandwiches. Like it's just such a, tens of thousands of people have dedicated the entire sum of labor of their life to, to work in this industry. They built like custom plastic molding just for IGA sandwiches. Like it's, it's crazy. Just have some self-respect. I think we need some more newspaper in here. Oh, baby. To be fair, the meal deals in the UK are banging. I can't speak about that. I've never been, I've never stepped foot inside of a Tesco, I think. Good call. You know, this thing's... I'm going to put one more log on here. I'm going to try to deliver some pizzas. There's not much else to do on a Samadhi. Can't touch that burning log with my hands. Okay. You know what? Hold on before we go. Just top up a little bit. I can't sell the barrel. The Federation is closed on Saturdays, okay? It's a cartel. Like, literally. Not, in a, like, not like a drug cartel. More like OPEC, I guess. Look at me, Hector. <laughs> Look at me. I wish I could do a better Gus Fring. Instead, all I, the, the only impression people ever say I have that's good is when I look inside of my generator to see if there's gas in here. And then I go, man, this thing is bone dry. That wasn't even that good, honestly. Okay, hold on. I'm going to be late for my pizza delivery shift. There we go. Oh, there we go. There, yeah, yeah. Parking brake. A pre release. Pre released. Reverse me. Reverse is one gear up from park in this thing. European cars, am I right? Owen Wilson's kind of good. It's a one trick pony, though. It's legitimately like. You just start with the wow to prime people to know that you're Owen Wilson. Then you get increasingly verbose, occasionally raise your eyebrows, and they just get really quiet. Like, wow, that's so cool. I remember when I was backpacking through the 
the wilds of K2 in the Pakistan-Tibet border. I was gone. I remember there were. You know, it's, it's just, it's not even an impression. It's just, uh, it's a caricature. He does throw in a little staccato from time to time. Like, when I was getting lunch yesterday, had a little bit of a slip-up when I was... That's not Owen Wilson anymore, you gotta whisper. Had a little bit of a slip-up when I was getting lunch yesterday. Something like that. No, I have to, I can't be late for my shift. No crinking! Oh, come on. At least, whoa, whoa, hold on. That might have done it, honestly. Counter steering. All right, fair enough. Put, put me back in neutral. <laughs> I just love the... The sight gag of the poutine always be in there when I open the trunk, man. That's so good. Has Sibs played this yet, or is he still in his Dota hole? I think I cracked an axle on this one, by the way. Okay, honestly, like, then we gotta actually try it like this. You know what I think would be a fun prank? What if you went to a Mercedes-Benz dealership and like got a, a salesperson and then just kept trying to ask them if, if they had anything that was like Benz, hold the Mercedes. Like I love, all, all this stuff you're showing me so far, these are Mercedes. I get that it's like a Mercedes-Benz dealership, but could I just get a Benz? Do you have any, like, pure Benzes here? Minus two? Honestly... I shouldn't have asked, chat. You lack vision. There you go, yeah! Well, we don't. Every car here is a Mercedes Benz. Oh, so you don't have any hybrids? I don't really want a hybrid. It could. You, if we spend some time in the in the writers' room, this could work. Thank you, Toasty, for the assist on that one. That that brought us back to only slightly being in the negatives. Snack Shack. <laughs> they that that sign was added. DLC. How's that for a parking job? It starts in half an hour, so we're just chilling for now. No sweat. Just take a seat. Nice place you got here. Also, when I lived in a rural area, uh, like a very, very rural area, this is what every restaurant looked like. It was like two tables and a bar. They served Salisbury steak and chicken fingers, and that's it. Okay, usually they close the door. Look at this. Whoa! This is, this is what LeBron James feels like when he goes to a restaurant. Uh, this is what like a little baby feels like when they, this is this is what my kid sees when they're on the the high chair. They have to reach up like above their head to grab the food. I am LeBron James. I'm LeBron James. Oh, I'm a little baby. I'm a little baby. Oh man. Anyway, I wish they sold coffee here, man. <laughs> I wish they sold coffee. You think I could fit in this thing? Shaq drives a smart car? There's no way that's true.
What? Let me guess. Pizza delivery started five, not seven. I got I got my seventeen hundred and my my nineteen hundreds confused. All right, that's fine. It happens. I guess I'll go home. Goodbye. See you later. Yes. I didn't do anything wrong. I can't race. It costs fifty bucks. Oh, I died. I sold all that firewood. You're absolutely right. I can race. And I got enough gas for it, too. So true. I don't want to be, like, too much of a hater. This is a little bit of a hater thing to say. But anytime I see someone driving a smart car in public, I'm always like, why? I'm sure there's some people in chat that probably own a smart car. But, like, if you were gonna get a smart car, why didn't you just save, like, $40,000 and get, like, a Toyota Prius or something? So, hybrid still saves you on gas? Still easy to park? Like, actually can reach highway speeds easily? I just don't understand, because, like, a smart car is, is so expensive relative to other cars that are also gas efficient. They're actually really fun to drive. I, I had no idea. Like, a smart car, what does it handle like? Is it more like a shopping cart? I drive a smart car, no cap, ask me anything. Well, like, the first thing I would ask is what drove you to purchase a smart car? Like, what was the driving impulse there? And what did you evaluate it against? And this, I'm saying this with no judgment because I actually, it's good to learn. We got, we got a little time till the race comes in here. Also, the other question would be like, what country do you live in? Because I'm sure like maybe in, there's countries where it's a little bit more apropos. Like, if you live in Montana and you bought a smart car, it's a different implication than, like, you know, if you live in the 17th arrondissement of Paris, France. They suck. Uh, this is the person who bought it. They suck ass. We have an 09 smart car. They're fun to drive. My parents bought it, so I can't complain. All right, well, uh, honestly, at that point, I simply have to ask your parents, I suppose. I do appreciate the insight, though. Hello. I don't race until I have swapped my engine. How are you doing tonight? Hey, by the way, you have a massive oil leak. Oh, never mind. There's a trail of rust following you. Yes, I would love to race against Michael. Is there anything I could do to, like, screw you up before we get started here? Bro, that's a Pontiac Sunfire. I am not scared. I just looked at my car. I'm a little scared. What if you cranked it? Yo! Hold on. I never even thought about this. No, they'll only allow you to connect it to your own car. That would have been sick, though. Oh, man. You know what we should do? We should set up... What the heck is this can? Okay. We should set up this crank at the finish line. And just crank ourselves to get a little bit of a head start. I guess I could park my truck in front of him. That's a good point. Or I could just beat him. Organically. Whoops. Okay, I'm ready. A little, little late on the switch. This is for General Motors. Now, I remember last time I tried to pit maneuver him, and he pit maneuvered me. I'm never letting that happen again. Skirt! <laughs> Hundred of the easiest dollars ever made in my entire life. 
I bet we move up a level in the division now, too. And I was like half a second late on my, my upshift to drive. <laughs> Need for Speed Underground taught me anything. There's a lot of room for improvement there. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, that was... That was more than I expected to, to gain. Oh, hey, hey, hey. Okay, maybe put this in neutral real quick. What a move. I got, there was some serious hang time there. That was so worth it, though. That was great. I had a, I had a wonderful time. <laughs> two, two barrel rolls after we won the race. Parked it right on the, the church steps. No, I, I can get home before we die of lack of sleep. I believe. First things first, I gotta remember where I am. Oh, I know where I am. Your trunk? Ooh. So true. Put that empty can back in there, you never know. Send it. I said send it. Curds all over the place. Anyway, what were we talking about? I, can't remember. I was having a good time, though. Headlights? There we go. Oh, we were talking about smart cars. Yeah, I don't know. I just... It's just... The smart car, it seems to me that everything it does is done better by an alternative choice. Like, a Prius has to get, like, similar gas mileage. It has to be... Oh, I mean, it's like half the price to purchase, right? It's only slightly larger when it comes to, like, parking. Like, nobody has built a, a parking spot that a Toyota Prius won't fit into. This is a problem. I can make it. I can make it. I can't go back. I got like 10% left. Smart cars are like 15 to 30k? No. I I thought they were like 70k. Can I get a price check on this? They start at 14,000. I know that that price is insane. That's why I was like why would anyone ever buy one? We're going to fall asleep in the woods tonight. Well, now I understand why someone would buy one if they're $15,000. $15, in 2020, they were 30 k All right. I mean, at 30 I could still see why someone would, would buy a smart car over some of the other alternatives. Time to sleep in the woods. Might as well get off the road. This looks kind of nice. <laughs> Perfect timing. All right. It's 2 p.m. on Sunday. You know what? We killed a lot of Sunday, though. I got 90 seconds of slow movement because I died. That's fine. Yo! You think uh, this wasn't here last time? We got to go back to the poutine stand and see if they actually allow you to buy the potatoes now. No, no. Uh, we, we were on Saturday, right? We weren't on Sunday. I'll just, I'll just chill for 70 seconds. Who cares? Sit in my truck. <laughs> no big deal. 
Now that I, I don't know, I think at some point told, someone told me a smart car is $50,000. And then I just factored inflation into it over like the last decade and thought that it was $70,000. Now that I see how cheap they are, I'm like, okay, I understand why someone would purchase it then. How much is a smart car? Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm on the Canadian website. Can you even buy one? As of model year 2020, smart for two vehicles will no longer be sold in Canada. Okay, sure, yeah, I'll build my own Mercedes-Benz. Where? Scroll down to the smart car. All right, if we can't get a smart car, maybe we'll just get a G-Wagon. NL's daddy, thanks for the gifted subs. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Car and driver smart car. What is it called? Auto trader smart car. New and used smart cards, smart cars for sale. 2018 smart for two. $16,800. Twenty thirteen, eight thousand dollars. Okay, these are way cheaper than I thought they were. Oh my god, two thousand and five smart car. This is the car that I think when I was lifting, I could have deadlifted the car to the point where the two of the wheels would leave the ground. The newer smart cars look a little bit less. Like a Hot Wheels, the 2005 smart car, I think if I wore gloves and I put my hand under, you know, like the door trim, I could get the two wheels closest to me to leave the ground. I'm not saying I could deadlift its weight. I'm saying I could lift, I could budge two wheels off the ground. What's your deadlift PB? 4,300 pounds. And with twice the towing capacity of last year's model. This is crazy, man. I had no idea that the smart cars were cheap. I honestly thought they were expensive simply because they were contained within the, the Mercedes-Benz brand catalog. Now I get it. There, that's a simple question. Or a simple answer, I should say. Now I'm going to be like less of a, of a smart car hater. It's going to take a bit. <sighs> Five seconds. <laughs> they used to be very expensive in Canada when first released. Okay, I mean, the, the, the plot continues to thicken a little bit. So, oh, okay, you get the idea. So we, this day, it's already 3 p.m. So we're not going to be able to do too much. We should honestly just like sleep. Then next time we go into town, we're going to bring the syrup barrel with us and sell it to the La Fédération at Syrup Érable. And then buy maple syrup so that we can not perish. That seems fair. You see in this line... And the jerry can for gas? I don't think I need gas, though. I think I'm kind of killing it on the gas front. Hit the apex. <laughs> then you want to get the best line on this one. Until right about here. You're going to stay on the outside.
And then when you cross the apex, look at this. Honestly, this is, I hate to say it because it's so true, but this is actually like how I think when I walk in real life. Maybe not now as a 33-year-old, but in the high school hallways, without a doubt. I was like, okay, quick one, quick one. Take the apex of this corner. Then you'll have a little bit more speed when you go up the staircase. You got to do things to occupy yourself, you know? Not in the grocery store, though. People need to respect the rules in the grocery store. You know, I didn't even want to mention it because I'm trying to... I'm like. Trying to be a friend of uh, humanity instead of, like, so grumpy all the time. But I was in the grocery store yesterday. I was trying to buy tortillas. Older gentleman was looking at the pasta on the other side of the aisle. But he had his cart blocking the tortillas. Is that why you think the, wild, the aisles are wide enough for two people? So that you can take up two people's worth of space, you old piece of crap? <laughs> Or is it so people can actually walk by you while you spend uh, 25 minutes to determine what the optimal brand of rotini is? You asshole. Okay, close me. Look at this. Look at this. She's bucking like a mechanical bull. Everyone's like, why are you so ageist? As if, like, anything I say in this chat, I don't have, like, 28-year-olds being like, wow, okay, Boomer. Who's ageist now? Shit flows uphill with respect to age. Okay, hold on. I think we, I think we got this out, man. Just don't forget. Is, you think this is rear-wheel drive? Still you, but also the people in chat. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. No, like, it, not 20 quantity of 8-year-old individuals. Honestly, it's illegal to be on Twitch if you're under the age of 13. But for the purposes of satire only, I think having an audience of 8-year-olds would actually be, like, not that toxic. I feel like they haven't reached toxicity yet. It's like when, when kids start to be like 11, 12, that's when they just like, you know, show up in like a chat room and go like, nah, fuck you. Nah, you, your butt smells, you know? Little kids though, they're, I mean, they might be toxic to each other. But like, I feel like, I mean, when I was eight on the internet, I'm pretty sure I was just going to like, you know, Pepsi.com. Maybe it's different in the modern era, though. I don't know. Well, this is my whole day right here. Great website. One of the one of the best web 1.0 websites for sure. Pepsi.com. Definitely, I also like. Um, would Google, like, Vegeta power level and then get sent to, like, some Angel Fire website or GeoCities website with the Matrix, uh, like, computer rain coming down? And I would be like, holy shit, dude. Gohan gets stronger than Goku at some point? How's that even possible? He's just, like, a little kid. about right here that's the ticket man are you in neutral it's a great question
Now I am. <laughs> hold on, hold on. How about this? It's crazy to think, like, some people live like this every day. Like, it really makes me feel thankful for what I've got. Like, you know, level roads without enormous ditches surrounding them. Damn, Basil, you live like this. Just makes me feel thankful for what I got, man. I don't think I can get this. I don't think I can get it out. Oh, maybe close the door. Great idea. Great idea. You also don't drive like a psycho IRL. That's actually true. Like genuinely, I, I don't. Uh, I, I drive like a normal person. It's everybody else that's the psychos, man. Okay, once you got it, like, a little crinked. Like, this is pretty good. Now you gotta go back, and you gotta put it... You gotta put the parking brake on. Then you gotta get out. Grab the... The crinking machine. And then pull it out a little bit like this. Then you get back in. Take the parking brake off. And then pull it back out. Door will not close yet. It's working. It's working. Okay, hold on. Fixed. That's why I hate video games. I mean, like, there's... I wrote a blog post about this. There's such a male power fantasy. Scream! 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 Oh, no, my car! Scream! 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 It's broken! Did this take the entire day? No, I only woke up from my death at 3 p.m. So, like, I've only spent, like, five or six in-game hours doing this. I had to burn off my death penalty, too. I think if we do this perfectly, we can actually get out of here now. Put the parking brake off. Grab the crinking machine. Put it back in your poutine hole. We're chilling, okay? I guess we'll just go home and take a nap. Reverse. Gun it. Parking brake off. Drive it, reverse it, drive it, reverse it. I forgot what button puts us in reverse. There we go. Why would I want to crink when it's still in the hoist puller? <laughs> Does it make any damn sense? There we go. Look at this. Parking brake on. Car. Crink machine. Back in the poutine hole. Close the trunk. Put your flashlight away. Throw that sucker into drive. Close your door. We're off to the races. 
You know the button for the brakes or only the gas? I know the button for the handbrake. Scoop. Fooled you. <laughs> oh, you should have seen the face, man. Turn those high beams on. Now we're talking. No glancing while driving. So true. So true. There's the sugar shack. It's called counter steering. Beautiful. Um. I'm good to go. Dude, I'm so excited to sell this barrel to the Maple Syrup Foundation tomorrow. I couldn't knock something off our to-do list finally. What a day. First time the car's been off in more than 24 hours. Bro, what are you doing? It's 1.45 a.m. Go back to bed. That's too much. Productive Sunday. Hey, I went from zero cars. Well, technically, I guess I went from one car to two cars. What's wrong with that? Nobody. Yeah, my car is not in danger of being robbed. You know, like, I, nobody in this game except me can walk. I knew it. Whatever. I know how to get to the sugar shack. Have you met Mr. Bonjour yet? I have not. I have not met Mr. Bonjour. It is fun to think about. How fast would you drive? If you were the only driver on the road. See you, boy. Like, I think on the highway, you could easily do 150 kilometers an hour without feeling like you were at risk of losing control. You would, no, come on. Like, on the highway, if there were no other drivers, you would do the literal speed limit. I don't believe, the speed limit is... One of the reasons the speed limit is what it is, is because you also have to watch out for other drivers. No curves, I would say 150, 160 kilometers per hour. I, I that's what I'm thinking. As is on Highway 1, I ever find myself at like a 130, I'm like, okay, maybe it's time to like take it back a little bit. I mean, the speed limit is 90. And the 130 is like a, a, a very rare upper maximum. 210. Hold, what 210? Are you crazy? All right. How sure am I that there's no police on the road? I'm saying this is a world in which there's no police in general and also no other people. How fast would you drive your car? I'm not a speed demon. If there were no other cars, I would drive faster, though, because there's less hazards. I would feel safer at a higher speed, knowing nobody checking their TikTok for you page is going to swerve into me and kill me. This guy's just... What? 120 liters of maple syrup? Legit? I can't... What's the density of maple syrup? This guy's insanely strong. That's got to be, like, at least, I don't even know, like, 500, 600 pounds? That's a great point. Let's, let's throw this into the, into the cab. I mean, this is precious cargo. Oh, 
Oh, you know what? Good point. Should drink drink a little syrup off the top before I go. Ah, whatever. Gas station's probably open. It's a Lundi. Saved. Saved. Hit. Saved. Oh, whoa, whoa! Hey, not when we're driving! <laughs> Whoop, excuse me. Just keep the 300 pound syrup jug on your on your lap for the whole ride. Hold on. And yo, get over here, okay? I need to use my parking brake. Bring the jerry can with me as requested. Shove over, man! Okay, careful. You got that ditch here. What's the fastest you've ever driven in your life? I don't know, probably like... Close to 130 kilometers an hour. Maybe I've hit like 138 and then looked at my speedometer and been like, hey, what the hell? I live in a, like a, a congested area, man. I don't get a lot of opportunities to really like, to let it rip, you know? The only people, like, maybe not the only people, but when you see people on Highway 1 that are ripping it up at, like, their, their max possible speed, they're actually driving psychotic. They're not just driving fast. They're, like, filter, uh, like, using motorcycle tactics to change lanes between, like, six cars in the space of, like, ten seconds. Like, they're actually driving like they have a death wish. The third gear is what it's all about, man. It's the best gear. I don't know, what are we doing here? 60? There's nothing, man. Federation de Syrup Erable. Pruning shears at the gas station will allow you to start your marijuana empire. I'm just telling you like I see it, okay? I don't know if we're going to grow the weed because it'll get demonetized on YouTube. It's like YouTube has a, a very um, puritanical stance on that kind of stuff. Now, could you trap your stepsister in a washing machine? See it all the time. But a single joint make it illegal for you to enter the country for the rest of your life. Oh, baby. Oh, oh, baby. Yeah. So it's two hundred dollars. You will be paid each Sunday for a couple of weeks. So they're going to pay me 200 bucks a week and then give me a barrel next week. Okay. Well, I think one thing we need to do is I think immediately we need to buy another barrel. I'll come back tomorrow to get it. And we'll, like now we're doing, this is passive income. We, there's no way we're getting a can sealer anytime soon, but that's a full barrel. Zero percent is full in your world. Okay, we have not been connected to main power yet. My bad. You're goddamn right. Okay, hold on. This will be our last in-game day. Then we'll do something else for the last hour. Hey, whoa! That was 
scary, man. <laughs> there we go. At least put him in the glove box. I don't think we got a glove box, man. You know what's scary? Going 30 miles an hour downhill on a bike. It's scary on a bike to get into a speed wobble for sure. But the absolute worst vehicle to be on a speed wobble on is a skateboard. Because you have no ability to stop yourself without throwing yourself onto the ground. Like you have, there's no, at least on a bike, like you can, there's brakes, you can pump them a little bit. On a skateboard, you know, like as soon as your foot touches the ground, like you're going to eat it. So how are you going to slow it down? What are you going to do, like a Rodney Mullen manual the whole way? I'd be surprised. I'd be surprised. Hello, hello, Jacques, Ferrero Jacques. You looks good today. You can't change my mind. This track is closed forever. What are you talking about? You're drunk. I will say on skis, like I, it's been a while since I went on a ski rant. Going too fast on skis is also scary. Like, you're just supposed to pizza to put the brakes on, but, like, sometimes it can take you a lot of runway to get the to get the brakes to work. And anytime we're at, like, a ski hill, I'm always just stunned by the fact that at any given moment, you're about, like, two seconds of bad braking away from literally just dying. Like, you, they don't make you do, like, a test or anything. To go up the ski hill, like I get that you, you probably sign a waiver or something like that, but it's insane that you'll be like on a, a fairly wide track, but when you're like a novice, you got people zipping past you at like, oh, fill up your jerry can, that's right, yeah, at, at like maximum speed, and at any given point, like if your knee is just like, oh, I got a cramp, like you could go over the fucking cliff, you probably wouldn't die, but you would suffer some grievous injuries. Of course, you need the super. Yeah, people die skiing all the time. What's weird, though, maybe it's not that weird, but it definitely seems like Skiing is one of those sports where, like, beginners rarely die. But advanced skiers die all the time. Because it's all about the thrill, right? That's the thing is, like, I honestly think that... Oh, oh. Like, being on, like, a public... I mean, I guess they're all public. Unless you, I don't know, you you got your own private ski hill. Um, but being skiing is almost like being on the road with other drivers, but you don't... Mr. Bonjour? You don't have a car to protect yourself. Like, it's just your body. Mr. Bonjour? Yo! <laughs> we finally found them. Like, even if you're a good skier, someone behind you that's a bad skier and doesn't know what they're doing could just smash into you. You know, hit you with 200 pounds of meat at 25 kilometers an hour and mess you up for life. Go check your mail! So true, I forgot, I was like, I don't have a mailbox. How am I supposed to get my mail? We go to the Canada Post. What the hell? Who's this? You looks good today. I take a walk around St. Clair every day, do you?
No one who's worse than me in skiing will ever catch up to me, so that's not a problem. Oh, you never have to, like, uh, wipe any condensation off your goggles? Okay, big shot. I, I didn't realize. You should sell a product like that. It would make, like, a billion dollars. You never check your cell phone because you don't have the right song on? Or your GoPro's not affixed properly? Oh, this one's gonna do numbers on my Facebook page. You piece. Okay, hold on. Which one's mine? Of course. <laughs> it's just junk mail, man! New products. Okay, well, whatever. Congrats. That's it? I'll just send it back to them. Return to sender. Uh, one time we went uh, night skiing at Grouse Mountain. They do it like once a year. And I had a good time. I, I genuinely enjoyed it. But also, so many people there were like clearly, heavily, like dangerously intoxicated. That I was like, I don't really care, like on a moral level, that they're drunk and skiing. But I cared a little bit that they're gonna be like shooting down this mountain with delayed reflexes and poor judgment and could like torpedo my legs out from underneath me or something like that. Like, seems like drunk skiing should be like as illegal as drunk driving. We work on the farm, serve yourself. Potato seeds! Don't ruin my fun. I don't know. I just feel like you've become a little bit more dangerous. Although I guess most of the time that people uh, suffer accidents in a skiing context, they usually just like hit a tree, right? Or they go like backcountry skiing, fall in an enormous pocket of powder and then just die. Maybe there's, maybe the drunk skiing is not that big of a, of an actual menace. I don't know. Tree wells, scary as hell. Yeah, anytime I'm in Whistler, I'm like, you see, you see a lot of stuff that's like, you know, hey, like, Want to ski through the back country? Uh, consider, like, not doing that because six people die annually. And I'm like, okay. Didn't have to... Dude, I don't even want to get on the blue circles, honestly. Some of the time. I'm, I'm like a bunny hill sort of guy right now. I mean, you could choke on a peanut and die, too. That's true. We should never, like, evaluate the risk of anything in our life because something innocuous has an infinitesimal chance to kill you. I am very smart, by the way. Sorry, that was needlessly rude, but it's just like that. It's a rhetorical statement that means nothing. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Like a glove. I wonder what the most commonly choked on food for adults is. There are definitely, I mean, I don't know what percentage of adults die from choking, like on their food. I would have to think that it would be like a fraction of a fraction. It would be like one in 50,000 people or something like that. But I wonder what it is. I gotta think that honestly, like a hard candy has gotta be close to being up there. It's not necessarily that commonly consumed, but like it's throat size. And it's not like you're gonna break down like a Jolly Rancher with your throat muscles. Like that, once it's in there, it's gone, man. Mochi in Japan. Yeah, we, we had, let's not call it words. 
but um, so on the baby's first birthday, there was a lot of Korean food there, obviously. I mean, the baby is half Korean. Kate's Korean. Her family's Korean. So one of the things that they do for a, a one-year-old's birthday party is they have a lot of dok, which is like rice cake. It's essentially Korean mochi. And the extended family was trying to feed my baby this dok. And I was like, yeah, we don't really want her like eating the dok because it has like the highest choking risk of any food uh, ever for babies. And they were like, oh, yeah, don't, she'll be fine. Don't worry about it. And I was like, okay, I guess I'll go fuck myself. <laughs> it's uh is my child but sure okay was she fine we didn't let her eat it i was politely like you know nah don't worry about it maybe maybe when she's older oh now there's somebody that like didn't even know it was risky in the first place, has said, don't worry about it, it's fine. I guess it's probably fine. Da -da. Plus two? Oh, thank you. Thank you, I appreciate it. This is not moonshine. This is maple syrup, okay? I just got to check and make sure it's not too cold. Oh, shit. <laughs> My generator's off. I'm, I bet it's... Someone said hot dogs, too. I mean, that's what you learn when you have a kid. Is, like... Basically... Don't serve them foods shaped like your throat. <laughs> that's that's where you can run into trouble. There's my jerry can. Shout out to Joey Chestnut. Absolutely true. Shout out to Joey Chestnut. I almost died to Mentos as a child. I had like a choking phase for sure. I know how that sounds like as a as a bop. I think I, like, almost choked on a baby carrot as a kid. And then for, like, six months, I would chew my food, like, a psychotic amount. In order to make sure I would never choke again. And my parents were like, you gotta, like, knock that off. And I was like, okay, ha, -ha. And, you know, just get over it forehead. But then I did kind of, like, just get over it. But I'm sure I, it annoyed them for, like, a long time. Because I was literally, I would bite into like a chicken finger and be like, hum, 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 and go, and chew on it. It took me like 45 minutes to eat dinner. I still do that. I hear, I mean, it's, you know, it's a scary, uh, it's a scary action, you know. Baby carrot, also a throat shaped food. Exactly. Now we're talking. Whoa! Ho, ho. Slurp me. One, tried to One time I tried to test how many bubble gums I could fit in my mouth. I almost died. I'm telling you, man. It's, uh, confectionaries have got to be close. Because I remember another like heavily anxiety-inducing moment from my childhood. My, I was probably like six to seven years old. It was a weekend. My dad was like, I got to go buy like some hockey equipment or something like that. So he took me to a sport, uh, sporting goods store. The sporting goods store had one of those vending machines that had jawbreakers in them. Got a quarter from my dad, got a jawbreaker, put it in my cheek, and then could not open my jaw enough to get it to migrate back into the part of my mouth where my tongue was. So I just had like a huge ball sticking out of my teeth and when you're a kid like and you panic it's already over right i'm like ah, i'm gonna die ah. they gotta stop selling that shit man that's not safe i didn't die but like i mean it just took a long time to i was worried that i would open my jaw by opening my jaw, my throat would open and the jawbreaker would just go like thunk and get like stuck right in there.
I was scared. They shouldn't sell candy that large. It's a choking hazard for adults. Also, jawbreakers suck, so, like, who cares? Maybe you're not on top of the... Maybe you're not being recognized. There we go. Yeah, you gotta you gotta put that jawbreaker on like a stick or something like that. Then at least you got like a lollipop. Lollipop also kind of terrible candy though. Dude, we're actually we're making a lot of money here. Okay, you're doing fine. You got three logs and not even close. Okay. Whoa! <laughs> Close that back up. All right, I'm just going to leave you to it. Stop trying to make everything illegal. Oh, the liberals are trying to take away my jawbreaker. Back in granddad's day, this is why men are so weak now. Uh... Granddad used to eat two jawbreakers a day and put down an entire handle of scotch. And look at him. He's fine. He lived to be 61. Okay. Where are we at? We need to eat a poutine. That's a given. Yum, yum. I had to swallow five jawbreakers on my way home from school. And we liked it. I think we should sleep. <laughs> I gotta wait for the power company to send me a letter in the mail. What the heck? Skip the mic, thank you. And then we'll save and quit. That seems apropos. Dude, I must have had like a big breakfast. I, I haven't had my single serving cheese ingot yet. I called them. I called them at the start of the, the section today. It's 10K for power. Holy. You know, well, we got passive income, so that's okay. Every Sunday we get like another 200 bucks. I get super stressed taking pills because of that. Dude, honestly, like... So Kate got these like huge vitamin D pills that also have other vitamins, minerals, and micro, macro nutrients in them. They're probably like, I would say about that big. Not that wide, but they're freaking in, enormous compared to like an extra strength Tylenol, right? And every time she gives me one of the pills to take, she has to turn away, because if she doesn't, she's gonna laugh. Because about one third of the time, that I take a pill that size, it gets a little stuck in my throat, and then I get like a pill burp that's like, Ugh! and then she starts to laugh, and when she laughs, it just makes it even harder for like, for me to actually finish swallowing the pill. It's going down like turn-based. Oh man. Burp, 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 burp. 